Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be using projection mapping to make some really cool cyberpunk stuff. Let's get started. I've been wanting to do a tutorial on cyberpunk for a little while, something related, and uh, you know, it's, it's tough because uh, everything in cyberpunk is super detailed, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it because we're gonna cheat today, not cheat. We're gonna use a good technique. It's called the uh, projection pattern. If you're not familiar with it, it's gonna be fun. So here's our reference image today. We're gonna be making, that's right, the motorcycle. So the motorcycle from Cyberpunk, uh, very cool motorcycle. It's nice. Not that I recommend riding motorcycles, um, especially without a helmet. It's very dangerous. But today on the stream, we're gonna make one. So how would you make something like this if you don't have a lot of time? I recently did a job for a client, really, really cool. And uh, what we had was we had uh, a bunch of photos and I had to take those photos and turn them into 3D scenes because they wanted some parallax and some motion. So to model this thing in detail would take forever, but we're not going to do that. We're going to model this thing really basically and see if we can't use the power of projection mapping to pull off a very realistic result. This photo I Googled, um, I will uh, post a link in the comments somewhere so you can uh, find it too. You can use any image. So don't feel like we got to do this just the motorbike. You can use this for any scene, any image that's pre-rendered. You can make some really cool stuff with it. All right, so let's jump in. So here it is. So if we bring it in as an image, so again, shift A and you bring in a reference, what it basically does is it brings in this empty uh, and it just creates something that's the exact same size as the image. Um, so now you've got your, your motorbike in 3D, right? So we can we can go mesh, plane, scale, grab Z, boom, it's sitting on the ground. Tutorial's over. Thanks for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed learning how to make your own motorbike. Just kidding. So let's delete that. I'm gonna jump back in here. Now, how do we do projection mapping? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to have some mesh that lines up with this image because the theory behind it is you take an image that's complete and you project it against your mesh like projecting a, a movie against the wall, right? So it's gonna take on the contours of that object. So we still need to model things, but we don't have to do as much detail. Let's, uh, let's get started, do the tires first, because that's pretty simple. We're gonna go mesh, uh, shift A, mesh, and we're gonna create a cylinder. I'm gonna rotate this on the X 90 degrees, and I'm gonna scale it down, and I'm just gonna position this roughly. Now I'm just grabbing, I'm not like restricting it on the X, Y, or Z, because I'm in orthographic mode. So again, you can get to that if you just click on, you know, the X, the Y, or the Z of your little handles up here, that'll switch you around. And again, orthographic means there's no perspective to the image. So, you know, if I hit five, which turns orthographic off, you can see that my grid lines start to go off and disappear into the distance. If I hit five again, it, they disappear. So turning perspective off is orthographic and it means that you can just work in that single, like single dimension plane. All right, uh, so we've got our tire. Um, I'm just gonna just, you know, rough this thing out. Um, like, like, so I'm gonna, Get rid of my front and back faces. So I'll delete that face and I will delete this face right here. And I'll go back to my other mode. I will turn on transparent mode just so I can see stuff that's behind this uh, image plane. And uh, I'll hit A to select all. And actually, no, I'm not gonna select all. I'm just gonna grab the front set here and I'm going to hit E to extrude. And we're gonna scale it in. I'm just gonna kind of rough this out because you can see there's a little bit of perspective warp on this back tire. This one looks a bit more flat. Um, so actually we could probably use, yeah, let's use that. that that'll, that'll be helpful. Let's grab that cylinder and let's grab it on the X and just bring it over here to the front. And uh, what we can do is just focus in on this. It's a little bit more flat, not perfect, but you know, close enough. And we'll just scale this in like so. And then um, let's think about this aesthetically. We probably want it to, I think from pictures I've seen, the tire kind of goes in. Right, so I'll grab this on the Y and pull this in a little bit. And then we're gonna hit E to extrude again and we're just gonna scale this down. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. So that, uh, one more time, E to extrude, scale it down and I'll just hit zero to scale to zero. And uh, then what I can do is tap A and then hit F3 and then type in merge by distance. That'll merge all those little vertices that are right there at the uh, the front. So. Let's, uh, let's go right here, we're gonna grab this one and we're gonna grab this on the Y, I'm just gonna bring it forward and um, we'll, we'll end up using a mirror modifier. So, um, and I wanna create just a little bit of an edge. So I'm gonna control B to bevel just this in bit, just to kind of curve that around a little bit like so. And I think I might put a subdivision surface modifier on this guy at some point, but not quite yet. All right, let's keep moving. So I'm gonna take that. Um, I will put a mirror modifier onto it so that I've got two sides to the tire. 
So I'm gonna switch to mirror modifier and I'll put it along the Z, there we go. I'll go into edit mode, hit A to select all, and I'm just gonna grab it on the Y and just bring it right in here. And then um, switch to transparent mode back on, go to my edge mode, select this edge, and I just wanna make sure this edge is positioned right at zero on the Y. So I'm gonna bring out my little um, control palette here and I can, yeah, check. So the zero, it says zero, actually, let me make sure that's correct. No, it's the Z one. So I'm gonna hit zero there and that's gonna line up that vertex perfectly uh, right in the middle there. And then I can just turn on uh, clipping. Do I wanna do clipping? Yeah, I'll keep clipping on. And our merge, that'll merge that geometry together. We're gonna to take this, we're gonna hit Shift D and we're gonna grab it on the X and bring it right back and leave it like that. All right, great. Now let's start building the other parts of the bike. So uh, what we're gonna do now is let's create this back end bit. So how do you create something that's like got a really weird sh shape? You know, it's not a cube, it's not a sphere, it's, you know, it's all over the place. Let's, uh, I'll show you how. What I like to do is um, I'll, I'll put it right here. So I'll select this object, I'll hit Shift S and I'll go cursor to select it and I'll Shift A and I'm gonna create a plane. All right, now I'm gonna rotate on the X just so I can see it. Um, I'm gonna go into edit mode, switch to vertex mode and then I'm just gonna like shift select one vertex. And I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna delete vertices. That means I only got one vertex. This is a piece of mesh with a single vertex. Now what I can do is I can come right over here to this thing and I can basically trace what I want. So I can go E, 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 E. I'm gonna say E every time I do it. E, that, that, like that. Let's come all the way down, let's grab this bit. Now at the very end, what I wanna do is I wanna turn on snapping right up here at the top and switch to vertex snapping. And if I click on that vertex and hit G to grab, I can drag my mouse over and it'll snap onto that other vertex. And I can hit select all, I can type F3, merge by distance, and that'll merge those two points. So they're now just one vertex, that'll make it all together. And uh, then what we can do is think about the depth of this object. So how's this thing gonna like, you know, how's it gonna flow and, and move in 3D space? So probably what we wanna do is we need to start this bit out flat and we want it to kind of curve back. So I want this area to kind of be where it's starting to curve once we get past the tire. So what I could do here is um, a couple of things. I could just grab the, well, first of all, we can select all and hit F to fill. That will fill this polygon. Now it's not a, not a polygon, it's an ingon because it's got a lot of different uh, vertexes. It's got more than four vertexes. So it has N number of vertexes. I think that's what it stands for. But what I can do is I can switch to my knife tool and I can go here and just grab this vertex, drag right down to that one and hit it. Now I've got a nice little edge that I can use to kind of sculpt this thing out with. Um, I might grab this one and bring down. You can make new points as well like that. Um, and then I might grab this one and just come up to that vertex and lock that in place there. I feel like this thing is gonna curve in so what might be good is uh, let's I'll come up here and then I might come like this. Now this is like, this is like horrible geometry, right? Like really gross, nasty geometry, but but that's okay. We can we can work with it. Go. All right. So how do we take ugly geometry like this and move it around and turn it into something nice? Well, let's switch back to our selection mode. We'll select these faces that are on the inside. And we'll grab them on the Y. I'm gonna turn off my empty just so we can see stuff here. And uh, actually we'll move we'll move it back out. I'll deselect this one. I'll just use these. We'll grab this group in just like so. And then I'm gonna grab this bottom edge because remember that thing kind of like goes in. It's, it's angled in like that. Okay. Um, and we can do other stuff. Like we could grab these guys and grab them in on the Y, you know, possibly. Um, you're gonna get weird ripping and tearing if you haven't like put enough cuts in. So you can see like this, it doesn't really know like what direction this, this polygon is supposed to face. So it, it starts to create these like tears. So you have to be a little careful about that. That's why I made these cuts because I'm trying to make it really clear for Blender where these sections are pointed. This thing is uh, needs to come forward a bit because it's blocking our tire. So I'm gonna grab it on the Y like so. And we're gonna select all and actually I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. We're not even gonna like project this geometry out. Um, well. Yeah, we will, we will, let's do it, let's do it. Select all, hit E, and on global, grab it on the Y, and we'll just drag it through like this. So how would you projection map this onto this? Let's go ahead and get that started, because then you can start seeing this thing come together, um, see the magic happen. So uh, let's grab this piece, we'll do this one first, okay? So I'm gonna create a new material, 
and I'm going to call this my bike. And I will I'll keep it principal BSDF and I'm going to open up my, my shader here, my shader graph. And now the key with projection mapping, it all comes down to telling it uh, how to use the UVs. What I can do is I can come over here to my modifiers tab and I can add a modifier called UV project. Now the UV project modifier allows me to select an object and select a UV map and it combines them to make a projection. The UV map is what lives on the plane. So if I come over here, every object has a UV map. And the UV map, again, if you're not familiar with that, if I switch to my UV editor and go into edit mode and select all, you can't see anything because we'd actually haven't unwrapped this thing. But if we were to, we can go UV, uh, smart UV project, let's just say, and bam, there we go, it's unwrapped it for us. So those are the UVs. That's gonna tell Blender how to position a texture onto this 3D object. Well, now what we could do is we could take this and we can select that UV map and what we're gonna do is we're gonna select what, what we want to be the projector. Now we don't have an object yet for this, um, but uh, we use anything. I, I'm gonna use a, I like to use a camera usually. So if I shift A, create a camera, I'll call this my projection camera, projection cam. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into that camera view and I'm gonna lock my camera to view. And I'm just gonna zoom out a bit until you know we're in the right right space. Come back to my plane. I can select that camera now, the projection camera. Now I can uh, well I'll gonna I'll add the material next, the texture next. So now I'm gonna bring in that that texture. So I'm just gonna uh, grab it and drag it in. You can just drag and drop uh, textures in. Now if I switch this, I'll put this into the base color because then it'll look a bit different for us. And I'll switch to 3D view. And okay, so it's rendering right, but it looks really gross. It's like stretched out, doesn't line up. It's like, what's going on? It doesn't actually fit this thing at all. So first thing you gotta do is you gotta set the size of this correctly. Now, one way to find out the size, if you're not sure, you can actually come over to your image editor. And because we've already brought this thing in, it's now available in the drop down menu in the image editor. So I can select it here, my image editor. And I can go up here and I can go to image, and then I can go to resize. And that's gonna give me the actual size in pixels. So I could say, all right, 1000, and I'm gonna come over to my aspect ratio of this UV projection modifier, and I'll paste 1000 in, and then I'll come over here, image, uh, resize, grab that second one, so 351, paste, boom. Okay, so now it's gonna start lining up. It's still not gonna be perfect though, because our projector is slightly different from our, our background plane. And this is can be a gotcha. Let's switch back to our shader editor. How do we get this to line up correctly so that it matches the same thing? Um, what I tend to do, what I, what I like to do actually is, um, if I grab a, a mesh, rotate X 90, scale it up just so it like fills the frame. I'll put the same modifier on it. So I'll come over here and I'll add in my UV project. I'll grab the UV map. I'll grab my projection camera and I'll put the same material, the bike material on, right? All right, now I'm gonna come in here and I need to get the same values. So uh, 1000 and 351. So come back to my plane, type in 1000, type in 351. All right, so now I'm matching the two, right? And now we can see it a bit clearer. In fact, even better if we just pipe this into the emission. Now it's gonna be really nice and clear. Now, what I can do is I can grab my projection cam and it's important to note that it's not actually using the camera, right? So if you take um, like the focal length and change it, um, we're actually looking through the camera. Let me, uh, I need to create a second camera. I'm gonna hit Shift D, create a new camera, and this is gonna be our uh, our view cam. And I'm just gonna do that so I don't get confused uh, about the two, because the projection cam is kind of a different thing. So I can change the perspective, right? And it's not gonna affect how it's projecting. I can also, it's like the, the size of the lens, nothing like that. Same with like aspect ratio. The only thing that matters is where it's positioned, okay? So on the Y axis, if I move this thing backwards and forwards, that's how you're gonna start seeing it um, actually change the size of the projection. So this is projecting. Now, you can't see the difference, remember, but it's using the same thing on both of these materials. That's why this is kind of blending in with that. Line up the scale a little bit, and then I can move this guy on the X till it's kind of, you know, roughly in the same spot. And because we traced it pretty exactly, you can find that point where it lines up pretty well. Like that feels like that lines up good. Yeah. Now what I can do is I can take my plane and I can hide it. And now we can see we've got this object. If I jump out, my view, I've got this object that now has the same basic, you know, look and feel as the as the bike. 
Now I can do the same thing with the tires. We can come over here. Now one quick way to copy the modifier that we have on this with these exact details and everything else is to first select these two objects, then select that object and go F3 and type in link. And we wanna link modifiers right there. Then we also wanna add the material. So we can come over here to bike and I can come down here and say copy material to select it. And that'll put the tire on both of these guys. So now the bike is a little bit different because of the fact that, uh, like I said, there's a bit of perspective on this tire. So we might need to fake that a little bit, but I'm gonna bring the scale guy, scale on this down a little bit, I'll bring it forward, bring it up. So it lines up a little bit better. There we go. Now, why does it look kind of ghosty, hazy? You know, you might be asking. Well, it's because we're piping this thing into the emission, but we're using a principled BSDF shader. So we got a lot of other stuff going on. If I stick this into my base color and add in a light, so let's go light, sunlight, and let's turn it up a bit, right? Let's take these guys and shade smooth. It'll help get rid of that faceted effect. You could say it starts to really kind of sit in the scene, but now we can actually work on the, the material property. So I can increase the metallic on these guys. And this one in particular is gonna look really nice as we crank that up, play with our specular a little bit. We can also come over here and we can create a color ramp like so grab the color, stick it into the here, and then we can grab a bump node and stick that into the height. And then we can plug this into the normal. And now we're gonna get this disgusting bump map, but what we can do with it is we can play around. We can cut parts of it out. We can switch it uh, to ease. I think it's probably gonna be a bit more gradual, back it off. And that's just gonna use the natural luminance values of the channel, create just a little bit of bump. We can also take our roughness down and start reflecting the environment a little bit. So pretty cool. Uh, it's uh, you know it's not perfect yet, but so if I wanna use this tire for the back tire, right? Because this one's got too much perspective on it. Let's just hide that one. If I take this and move it, right? It's gonna take the, the texture with it, right? Because it's projecting still. If I wanna turn off projection now for this guy, I need to go to my modifiers for this object, click on this and click apply. Now, if I grab it, you can see it sticks with it and I can turn off snapping, bring it back here. And then I'm gonna switch to local um, and I'll just rotate it around so that the, the thing is hiding on the inside. Uh, oops, I needed to duplicate that, didn't I? Shift D to duplicate. Now it's a bit more lined up. So if we get out of that view, it doesn't look as wonky. All right, let's keep traveling. I'm gonna jump back into my view. I'm gonna turn my uh, my plane back on and I'm gonna take my world and turn it up a bit so it's a little bit easier to see. And uh, now what we can do is begin to sculpt out a couple more of these pieces and start to flesh out the rest of the bike. So I could take this object and actually just shift D to duplicate and then go into edit mode and select all and then just shift select one of these uh, vertices. Like so, again, delete everything. Now I just have this single vertice. So I can start to map this out and turn off snapping. And uh, let's see, we'll, we'll do the back part of the bike now. There we go. So you can see like, as you can just kind of like cut out these sections and you know pull in more and more detail, you're gonna be able to like, you know, get away with a lot. Like, look at this, look how far around the corner we can get with this. Uh, now I can just take this thing and I can uh, shift D to duplicate and I can apply the UV projection and then I can scale on the Y negative one and then I can grab it on the Y and just kind of drag it over. Um, and that allows us to then kind of position these things a bit better so they match up. Now let's add in the Lost Star Mirror modifier on these guys. Oh, that's right, because we copied over our, we, our linked, um, our, our link, we linked our modifiers. So come here, add in the mirror modifier again. And what do I want? Z, perfect. Great, I got a bike, grab on the Y, bring this over a bit. And then I can come in here and I can grab my edges, bring them over just so they line up. Um, and we could add even more to this, like we could come here, um, so create mesh. I see cylinder, rotate X90, and let's scale it down and grab it on the Z. Jump back into my camera, I'm gonna line this guy up right here and I will uh, select this, select this, and then, oh no, sorry, other way around. So we select the object, then we select the thing that has the correct map on it, 
and type F3 link modifiers, boom. And then I can come to this material tab, copy material to selected. And now I can scale this down and just kind of get that positioned correctly. Maybe scale it down a little bit. And I can shift D and let's do another one right here on this thing. What we can do is let's grab the front face of this guy. So I'll go into face mode, delete that face, go into edge mode, grab that, hit E to extrude, scale it down, grab it on the Y. So we've got that, that slight bevel to it. And then E, scale, scale to zero, all F3 merge. There we go. All right, now let's say we've got, we've got this thing going. There's more we can do to that. You keep building out this detail, but then how would you kind of sit this in something? How can we make this look like a cool shot? Well, we can leave our projection uh, camera there, you know, doing its thing. Uh, or you could just go in and apply the modifier to all of these guys and it'll be baked and you can move this bike around and position it however you want. So um, just like we did with the tire. Now I'm going to create a, a plane for this to sit on. So I'm going to grab this, grab this, and jump out of orthographic mode, scale it up and give it like some ground. We're going to jump into the camera and I'm going to lock my camera to view. Now we're just going to find a cool shot. So I'm going to pull this up. We're going to take the camera and we're going to give it not our projection cam, but our view cam. I'm going to give it a wide angle, like 24. Get right up on the tire. That's kind of the classic cyberpunk, you know, shot, right? And then we cantily or we, we Dutch angle the camera. So like that, right? Now let's come to our ground and let's create a material for this. We're going to create a musgrave. Right here. So we got our musgrave. We're going to create a color ramp node. Actually, probably don't need a color ramp. Let's just go straight into the. I'm going to create a bump node. Sorry, yep, bump node. Take the height into the height and the normal into the normal. I'm going to take my base color and I'm going to drop it right down. We're going to make some asphalt or bitumen, depending on where you're from. And I'm going to take the scale and I'm going to drag this way up. And then I'm going to take my dimension and drag it down and I'm going to take my detail up. Okay. And I'm going to take my strength and let's we'll see, maybe the distance, maybe the distance might be good. Distance can kind of like soften it if it's a very large object, which this is. Um, so take that, something like this, maybe take the roughness up. Specular, it's not too specky. I'm going to turn my lock camera to view so I don't trip myself up. I'm also going to turn on passport too. So I'm going to go to my view cam, come over here down to viewport displays, click on the camera tab, and then come down to passport to underneath viewport display. Just drag that out. That helps you just focus on what you're actually looking at in the scene. Uh, now what we can do is take the color background. Let's say it's, it's a night scene. Let's go for night. I'm going to make this a little bit reflectant and then I'm going to come to my sun and I'm just going to find a cool angle for my sun. I'll shift D to duplicate it, bring it around to the other side to give it that nice dramatic backlight. Crank this one way up and give this a bit of a, maybe an orange tint or a blue tint. Yeah, it's, there you go. That's cyberpunk. This one too? No, this one go maybe orange. Turn this one right up. Come forward a bit like this. I'm going to come over here. We're going to turn on bloom, ambient occlusion, and screen space reflections. And that's how we're going to start getting the really nice reflected floor. Looks really great. Now we can get our camera and our view cam, and we can turn on depth of field. We can select uh, our object here, one of these objects. Turn our f-stop down to like one maybe, or point, point 0.5 even. Could be kind of cool. Um, I might expand my focal plane a bit. Just mess with the focal distance until we get the right section, maybe 0.8. I don't want it to be that shallow. All right, turn the strength up on my asphalt floor and you can see we start getting really nice reflections off that. Um, then you can take our distance down as two. That's kind of an extreme value. I don't really need that. Yeah, this is way too hot. That's pretty good. All right, let's shift D this and let's rotate on the Z again, bring that off and let's, let's get some magenta going so that it feels like it's, you know, from the game because magenta is where it's at. Oh, that's cool. Look at that little pinprick. Whew. 
Okay, uh, let's put some stuff in the background. So um, I want to do what? Um, maybe some, we could add, uh, if we do like a rotate X 90, scale up our plane. I wonder what would happen if, what if we took this, create a new material on it, create a noise and uh, plug it into the alpha, turn on, uh, let's go alpha hashed, and then grab a color ramp. Pull this up, switch that to ease. Make some, make some smoke. Size of one. Increase the detail. Switch it to alpha blend. It'll look a bit better, I think. Turn off show back face. Yeah, that looks right. Now it needs to have a bit of color in it. So actually, what happens if we change the color here? Yeah, that looks rad. Now we can take that plane, we can scale it down, find a good spot for it. Whew, that's pretty sick. All right, um, last thing we could do is we could go into our world shader. Let's go for a uh, volume scatter node. All right, let's uh, take our density down to 0.1, take our anisotropy down as well. Maybe not down, actually, anisotropy up looks pretty cool. 0 0.05, 0 0.02, 0 0.001, now we're talking 0 0.0005. Yeah, I hope you found this fun. That's how you can use projection mapping to cheat and make some stuff that looks really cool really quickly. Even though we've got a hole in our mesh and no handlebars, you get the idea. And it's uh, it sells, it looks good. I think it sells itself. It's pretty awesome. Let me know what you think. What do you like? Do you like this kind of technique? Do you think this is a cool way of method of uh, approaching this kind of a thing? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the stream today. And uh, if you like these videos, uh, let me know. We'll keep them coming. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching and for subscribing to the channel and all that jazz. You can find us now everywhere, Twitch, Facebook, all these fun places. Uh, so check us out. YouTube's not your jam. And uh, thanks again to our one Twitch viewer. You're amazing. And everybody on YouTube, as always, thanks so much. Have a fantastic day. I will catch all of you later. Adios.